For learning outcome number seven, we will be talking about bone remodeling. Like the skin, the bone forms before birth, but continually renews itself thereafter. Bone remodeling is the ongoing replacement of old bone tissue by new bone tissue. It involves bone resorption, which is the removal of minerals and collagen fibers from bone by osteoclasts and bone deposition, which is the addition of minerals and collagen fibers to bone by osteoblasts. Remember that osteoclasts are the ones that will be chewing the bone, so that's why they're removing the minerals and collagen fibers from the bone. And osteoblasts are the ones that build the bone, therefore they will be adding the minerals and collagen fibers to the bone. Thus, bone resorption results in the breakdown of bone extracellular matrix and bone deposition results in its formation. About 5-10% to 10 of the total bone mass in the body is remodeled each year. The renewal rate for compact bone tissue is about 4% per year and for spongy bone tissue it is about 20% per year. Remodeling also takes place at different rates in different regions of the body. The distal portion of the femur is replaced about every four months. By contrast, bone in certain areas of the shaft of the femur will not be replaced completely during an individual's life. And this is because this distal portion of the femur is going to be part of the knee joint, which is a joint that is always under continuous stress. Even after bones have reached their adult shapes and sizes, old bone is continually destroyed and new bone is formed in its place. Remodeling also removes injured bone, replacing it with new bone tissue. Remodeling may be triggered by factors such as exercise, lifestyle modification, and changes in your diet. Remodeling has several other benefits since the strength of a bone is related to the degree to which it is strained, if newly formed bone is subjected to heavy loads, it will grow thicker and therefore be stronger than the old bone. Also, the shape of the bone can be altered for proper support based on the strain patterns experienced during the remodeling process. Finally, new bone is more resistant to fracture than old bone. The image on top here shows a normal bone on the left and a bone on the right that presents with osteoporosis. Osteoporosis is going to be the skeletal disorder that's going to be characterized by this compromised bone strength that will be predisposing to an increased risk of fractures. As we know, throughout life, older bone is periodically resorbed by osteoclasts at discrete sites and they are replaced with new bone made by osteoblasts. Excessive activity of osteoclasts they may cause several types of diseases such as osteoporosis seen here and also some bone tumors. So this is why it's important to create medications that will control the activities of these osteoclasts.